Hi, Ashley here, and today I'm going to talk about two types of contamination that I commonly get and see in other grows. Trichoderma and Bacillus are two common types of contamination that I regularly get, and today I'm going to show you what they look like, how they grow, what to do if you do get them, and how to try to prevent it in the future. So let's get started. The first type of contamination I commonly see in grain spawn bags or jars is Bacillus, also known as wet spot or sour rot. It looks very wet and slimy, often dull grayish or brown in color, and can be identified by its awful foul smell. The scent is often described as rotten apples or dirty socks or sometimes like rotten eggs. It's absolutely awful spelling. Alternatively, Clean grain spawn smells really earthy, like fresh grains, or kind of like tobacco. In addition, when you have wet spot, occasionally the grains will refuse to colonize. The mycelium that does colonize will avoid the infected grains, causing the mycelium to grow in some spots and not at all in others. Lastly, sometimes yellow or clear liquid will be excreted from the mycelium. This is called metabolites or mycopis. Metabolites are produced by mycelium either as a response to competitive stressors like bacillus or to aid in the digestion of food in the environment. Small amounts of metabolites aren't anything to worry about. However, large quantities are a solid indication of a bacterial infection. Like any bacteria, bacillus is extremely fast growing. A single cell reproduces every 20 minutes and will multiply into a nearly a million daughter bacteria. In less than 14 hours, one trillion bacteria evolve from a single parent cell. If you do identify that you have bacillus in one of your bags and the grains won't colonize, it's best practice to just toss the bag. But if you have a bag that is fully colonized and only has a few metabolites but looks and smells healthy, a lot of times it's okay to send a bulk. The best way to eliminate bacillus is to properly prepare and sterilize your grains. And that's a topic that I'm going to cover in a future video. The second type of contamination that I frequently see is trichoderma, a common type of mold, also referred to as green mold, trich, or trich. Trichoderma starts off bright white and then quickly turns green within a day. It has a very powdery texture, unlike mycelium, and once the spores turn green, they start to disperse throughout the air and spread quickly. Trichoderma can cause serious problems in mushroom cultivation. Issues with trichoderma are most prominent in the fall and occur most often in later flushes. Trichoderma has a very fast growth rate and can grow up to an inch per hour, which is about three times faster than oyster mushrooms. It grows between 50 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 99% humidity, which is also the perfect environment for mushrooms to grow. It will try to overtake any area and consume the whole space. If you let it, trichoderma can encase a whole tub within a week. If you suspect green mold, a good test is the Q-tip test. Take a Q-tip and gently wipe it across the face of the suspect mold. If some of the powdery mold easily comes off on the Q-tip, then it's likely mold. If nothing shows on the Q-tip, then it's probably clean mycelium or just bruising of the mycelium. Growers often ask me if they can save their tub if they have mold. For me, once I see green, I immediately put the tub outside and toss it. It's just not worth risking other grows for that one tub. If that's your only tub and you don't mind the risk, you can try cutting out the mold and then spraying that area with 70% isopropyl. I don't really recommend this because it has a very high risk of cross-contamination and a low chance of success. For more information on this method, Philly Golden Teacher has a great contamination video and it shows exactly how to cut out the mold and it starts at 4 minutes and 46 seconds. So check his video out. If you do decide to do this, make sure you isolate the tub away from other grows or potentially do it outside. Contamination is always going to be a factor when growing mushrooms. No matter how sterile you are, there is always risk for contamination. Every mycologist will encounter it at some point or another. Personally, I get about 25% contamination, which could be in a spawn bag, in a monotub, or a petri dish. Some of my tips to prevent contamination is to be as sterile as possible at every step of the game. Before I start, I always sanitize my work area and tools with 70% isopropyl. Make sure not to use 99% because it evaporates too quickly. Then before every grow, I spray and wipe down everything I can with 70% isopropyl. I also take a shower and wear clean clothes. Finally, getting an air purifier for the room is a great way to reduce contamination. 
I keep mine running 24 seven in my workspace. And by following these protocols, I have greatly reduced my contamination. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Bye.